All right, guys, bear with me. I'm going to uh, show you something here today. I purchased this set of Gold Strike three-way adjustable highway peg mounts. Now, I actually bought these off the Amazon warehouse, so I got a, a good price, an extra 20% off, because someone evidently bought it and returned it. And I'm guessing that the reason why is because the installation instructions leave a lot to be desired. And they probably looked at it and thought, I'm not gonna attempt that for whatever reason, but. Uh, and I, I looked online and it's just not clear. I mean, nobody, including Gold Strike had a video, but they show you parts that are already pre-assembled and uh, it's confusing as heck. Uh, and I couldn't find a video that really explains more clearly how to assemble these on your gold wing. So I'm going to try to help you out today as much as I can here. You know, I always start out by carefully going through looking at what the parts list is. And that's the key. So, and then, you know, sometimes you don't even know what they're referring to. So, but I'm going to kind of walk you through. They, they call, a, you need a one left mount, one right mount. Well, in, in those uh, particular mounts, uh, I call that these pieces. They're both labeled R, which is kind of confusing to me. Uh which you would indicate that they're both right, but I don't believe that's the case. Uh, I'll find out when I get out and I stitch back this, but but mo some of the parts are labeled left and right, but in this particular case, these are both labeled R for, which you would think were right, but I'm guessing it just refers maybe to the way it, it goes onto these sliders. But anyway, uh, so they call for a left, main and a right main mount then they say you have a left slider and a right slider and they that's what I, these are what i'm calling the sliders and these sliders uh, i say that because these actually do slide on this mount slides on this piece actually you line it up and it slides and it's because it's adjustable you can move it here or put it in the center, move it back, depending on how long your legs are. So I call these the sliders, you know. And then they have uh, some, uh, they go in and they mix some flat washers and wave springs and things in the mix and it's confusing. Uh, but I'll go over them in a minute, but Let's keep going with the left angled and right angled peg mounts. Well, these are both the same. Uh, they're identical. Uh, they're not labeled left or right, so but they're identical. But what's critical here is that when you look at these on the side, this is a thicker end than this and you want to make sure that the thicker end gets put here and while you're putting the thicker end you'll use the longer uh screw also than up here this is a little bit shorter thinner up at the top and so you'll use the smaller screw up here too now uh so let's go back to this list okay so now we see what they call the left angled peg mount, right angled peg mount. Then they say you have uh, two U-clamps. Okay, now this is what I call the U-clamps. The and these are going to basically be what attaches this device onto the bike. And you'll see that when I show you the, the stitched part of the installation video. And what's interesting is that you'll notice that the top of these have hex screws. The rest of these are M6s or M8s, uh, 
And don't forget that because that's important because what's going to happen is you're going to have a tight spot to work with and you're going to need to take a 10 millimeter uh, and you're going to have to tighten that up because this is going over a piece of your pipe. You'll see, I'll show you, to mount. And so you're going to need to reach in there with a 10 millimeter. That's why this is a hex head. And so on each one, let me back up and give you a big picture again. You'll see when you put that U-bolt on, and notice how it's bolted. It's a, it's bolted to the top and here, and it, it has to be configured that way. Now, of course, when this is mounted, then you can easily use your, your M5, M6, whatever, and get in here and tighten these down, but you'll need a 10 millimeter on the top of that. So anyway, those are the U-clamps. Then they, they say you have some two clevis pins, which of course the clevis pins end up going out here and the reason for the clevis pins is so that pivots and so you get a full picture here's that that actual peg pedal uh, on the end of this device so you can see this is the right side of the bike and you can see it it's mounted out there this arm kicks out and then ultimately the pedal gets on here well this needs to be able to pivot and you can adjust it but you also may want to kick your pegs up and so you have to have a, a clevis pin so this can pivot. And they tell you you got two wavy washers. Well, those are inserted in here when you put the clevis pin in so that you have some freedom to move and pivot that up and up and down. So, okay, now, so let's go back over here. You'll notice that they mix in here washers and springs with hardware and that kind of somewhat gets confusing but they say peg mount pins and rings well those are these and we usually call these locking or locking pieces but i assume they refer to them as peg mount pins and rings uh, which are going to ultimately go here to clip that on and lock that in place and hold it uh, then they lay out your assortment of hardware and they tell you you've got, you know, your M8s, uh, 70, 18, 25, 20, 20. Now, in an earlier video, I showed you what I do is I get my tape measure out and I use the millimeter side of the tape measure and I literally measure those so that I can separate them. So I know when they refer to a 20 millimeter or 70 or whatever i mean i know exactly which one they're referring to for example the 70 millimeter is the longest one in the package and that gets bolted into uh basically behind the cover of your cylinder head and you'll see that again like i said i'll i'll put that on the back end of this video but there's that 70 millimeter uh that's the longest one so anyway you just measure those out so you know. So, for example, these are the M6s, and there's six of these. And so you you can see you're putting two here. You're putting two here. That's four of the six. You're inserting one here, inserting one here. Now, what's not clear is that they give you some excess washers, but then in the instructions, they don't always refer to where the washers go. I mean, for example, I know, and the instructions tell you, that you are to insert a thin washer into the pedal. And, uh, and so there's a one bag that has those two, two screws and two washers. And I know that. But they give you excess washers. Now, you know they tell you that a washer goes here where the 70 millimeter is on each side. And so that's clear. But then you have these four additional m6 washers and they don't tell you where they go and you would think they would go here because these are m6 hardware screws there's four of them and hence they gave you four the problem being that they do not recess in to lock this down so the only other m6 uh screws or hex screws that you have would be these two so i am assuming that that's where those washers go, and that's where I'm inserting mine. Here and here. Like I say, when you go through and you read the instructions, they don't refer to the washers 
And so they tell you to use, you know, a 5 16 by 1 8 screw, you know, or it, it, only in the instance of the pedals here do they tell you to use the narrow washer. And it tells you here, a 5 16 narrow flat washer. Well, I've got that. But the other places, uh, I'm not sure. I know about the wavy spring that gets inserted in here. But I wasn't sure about those others. Okay, so now, if you can picture this, this here then is what gets mounted on the right side, and then this is the left side. So pay attention to your hardware. Some of it is labeled left and right. I mean, for example, this, this slider bar, you'll know that's left, and you'll know which one is right. Uh, this bar is not labeled. These are the same, they're identical, so it doesn't matter. These end pieces are labeled left and right, so get them right, of course, when you put them in. Uh, like I said, these two are both labeled R. I'm not sure why, but we'll see if we have a problem when we get out there. Now, I'm gonna take this out, and I'm gonna now install these, and I'll capture a video on that part, and I'll stitch these together. Hopefully, this will help you if you're installing these. Again, these are a, a Gold Strike three-way adjustable highway peg mounts. Now, I don't know why it's so difficult to, I guess, describe installation. Sometimes, you know, when they duplicate these pictures so many times, sometimes it's very hard to see exactly what they're referring to. Maybe it's my failing eyesight as I get older, but... Uh, but anyway, that's your instructions, uh, basically a one page on both sides. And so, all right, so hopefully this is helpful if you are installing these. I mean, they're build, good, build quality looks good. And, su and surprisingly, I don't believe I am missing any hardware. I saved myself about $100 on these things. Thank you to Amazon Warehouse. And I think it's going to be a pretty smooth install. So I'll stitch it together and hopefully help you. So stay tuned. Okay, now I'm out here on the bike, and to get you a five millimeter like this, and get out here on each side of your bike where these little spotlights are down at the bottom, and take that little five millimeter out on each side, then get back here on the back side and remove that five millimeter, which I've got here. All right, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this cover off here see it's just a plastic cover now once we do that then we'll be able to expose one more five millimeter here and it's kind of loose because what we're wanting to do is now get this cover off too so i'm keeping my screws intact now this piece is a little tricky because be careful you don't want to break it it has a tab but you want to kind of work it loose and what we've got to do is we've got a rivet in here not a rivet, but a one of them, them um, plastic holders in there that's holding this. And so I've got to be careful to work it out. But at the same time I'm working it out, it's got a piece. There you go. Locks it in place. So I want to be careful of that too. I don't want to damage that. So I've got to work it off. So let me work with it here because I don't want to break them tabs. Let's see what's, if there's anything that's holding it here. Yeah, I could see the tab in there. And I need to get it, work it forward. Get that tab loose now. Let me see if, I don't think that's holding it, but I don't want to get in a big rush either and damage this. So let me come under. Let's see if there's anything else holding this. Nope. I don't see anything there. So let me... Let me pause and take a look at it. Okay, so what was holding me uh, from being able to pull this out is this little clip here. 
that sits in this spot. So you have to reach on the bottom also and kind of pull out. Well, what I was referring to is be very careful that you don't try to just rip this totally off. I mean, loosen it up. But when you get ready, you gotta push this forward. See this little L clip here? It sits right in here. You wanna be sure that this panel, when you have got it loose, then you wanna come forward on it a little bit so you, you don't break that tab off. All right, so now I have that cover off. So we can get down here and we can start to see what we've got to do. Now, let me just give you an overview. Let me get a light. Trying to give you an overview. Let me get down here. All right. So you can see down here, essentially what you're doing is you've got this brace here that comes around. That's a brace for your bike in case you tip it over. And what you're going to do is you're going to get down here and you're going to replace one of these screws here. And you're going to use this 70 millimeter replacement and this bracket, and we're gonna lock it onto that and all. So let me get it installed, and then I'll come back and give you another video. All right, guys, I'm trying to make this as clear as possible. So what I've done is, just to show you where I'm at, I've taken that, the and here's your crash bar, of course, on the right side of the bike, and I've taken the Honda standard uh, screw out, on the front part of that crash bar. And now I've inserted that 70 millimeter with washer. And you can see that U-bolt is now installed over the crash bar here. And let me get back so I can try to get this so you can see it. You can see, and now as I was telling you earlier, that's the reason you need this hex bolt up at the top because you're gonna to have to reach in there with a 10 millimeter and tighten that down. So we need to make sure that we position that so that we can get in there and do that. So all I'm doing at this point is I'm tightening up this 70 millimeter. Then I'm gonna take that hex head bolt here and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna put that over the top of that U clamp. That's clamped basically to the crash bar. All right, so I'll zip it up and come back and, and, and tie it together. All right, now, well, now let me show you with the flashlight on the point. Now you can see uh, this is that hex screw that I was telling you that you have to reach in with a 10 millimeter. And you have to tighten down. That's the reason they give you a hex here because there is no way you can get that other end. So you have to reach in. Now, by the way, that... Uh, crash bar, Honda's crash bar, that is a 12 millimeter that you're removing. So you'll need a 12 millimeter to remove that because you replace it with this 70. Okay, now that this part, this side is tightened down here and you can see I've got it pretty tight. Then I can reach in underneath here and I can tighten this other one here with my five millimeter. Let me find it here. I can get on there and tighten this five here. And you can see that that's the way this is mounted. It's basically using that U-bolt to go around your crash bar. And then of course, we can come in with that 70 millimeter and tighten it now. Save it for last because you're gonna have to tighten them top ones. So now we can start tightening this 70 millimeter in there. And you can see it's tightening down. Now, see, I pre-installed pre pretty much all of this to make it simpler, as I showed you in the early part of this video. Uh, all right, so now you can see it's secured here, basically on that crash bar. And there's that slider. And here's those M6s. And you can see uh, that you can adjust this back and forth. And then ultimately, this piece will pivot and I'll put the pedal out here on the end and I'll turn it this way so I can fold those pedals up. But I'll do that in the cover. So keep following me when this is all done and I'll have it all stitched together. 
Okay, now I'm still on the right side of the bike. And uh, as you can see down here now, I've got this tightened onto that crash bar. And I went ahead and tightened these on the slider. I'm using the center position. This I haven't tightened down, but I'm ready now to put my cover back on it. Remember I told you about that L-shaped point that you have to has to recess in there and be pushed back. So make sure you line that up and get this back in there. And now I'm going to have to... Uh, Get, I'm going to have to move up and get this in position because I don't want to break that. And then, like I said, these, these snap back on and you've got some snap points in there. So let me, let me make sure and I line these up. There's that snap point there. I don't want to miss it. And then I also don't want to miss my top part here. So let me get this part snapped in. Let me get this part up, and I've got to get my, ultimately, I've got to get my crash bar installed in there because it recesses in there, too. So let me line this all up, and uh, then we'll be good to go. All right, so let's see here. Okay, yeah, there's a point there where that snaps on. Snaps on, then get down here and make sure that piece is snapped in, too, and then just put your hardware back in. Now, and then I'm going to put my front cover on. All right, so stay tuned. All right, so now I have snapped my cover back on, and I have put this screw back here in the back on. I put the one inside here on, and then I put this spotlight-type cover, fog-light cover on, and I put the two screws back in there. Now, I've just pivoted this to the point to where I want it, and I've tightened this screw in, and now it's sitting out here waiting at this point. Now, this is important. When you install this, make sure you get this so that you can pivot this up because you might want to kick your pegs up in the up position. So position that the correct way that you want it, okay? And so that's what I've done at this point. Now... Now what I'm going to do is I'm getting ready to install this pe peg here out here. And this is where you use that small washer that goes in there also. I'm just going to attach that on this end. Then I can pivot and adjust this. And that's all it is to it. So that, that'll be the right side installation. Now I'll come back and do the uh, left side and all. All right, now I'm going to uh, also stitch the left side, but I followed the same procedures now uh, of removing that uh, light cover on the front side here, your fog light cover, by taking the two screws out and snapping it off. Then I've taken the left side cover off by removing the screw on the back and the screw in the center. I mean, not the center, but back on the back side here, front side, I'm sorry. And uh, then, like I said, be easy, snap it loose. But remember, don't snap your piece off. You have to get it loose and then move it forward to take it out of that slot. And let's go back over the routine again. So we, were, we come to the crash bar and remove the bolt on the crash bar. Then we use the 70 millimeter bolt with a washer and we insert it. We don't tighten it down yet. Then use your U-bolt to come across your crash bar and hand tighten this as much as you can. Then get you a 10 millimeter and reach in there. Remember, this is that hex screw. So you can get in there with your 10 millimeter and you can get on the head of that and you can tighten that down. All right, then get your, your M5 out and come back around on this other bar and tighten that side. Then you can tighten down your 70 millimeter. Now, like I said, all of this I assembled in the house. Okay, then I tighten these two M6s down here, and that does not matter. Even though it said R on both sides, it doesn't matter. It's on the sliding bar. Okay, now I am ready to put my covers back on, and then I'm just going to work with this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach down here first and tighten the back side of this screw since it's in the lower position. Then I can pivot this any way I want, tighten this one. And of course, I'm gonna put my pedal, my peg pedal here on the end, on this side, and I'm gonna secure it down, adjust my positions, and I'm done. So 
I'll do one more video with it closed. Up. Okay, guys, the final video of the installation now. And you can see now it's installed. There's my foot peg. Now be sure when you install these, don't forget to make sure that they pivot up. So you gotta get this tightened down the correct way so that it, your pedals can be kicked out of the way like that. So make sure you install that one correct. While you got it in the down position, just spin that up. You can see I've got the screw at the top here. So that, and I've, I've set the ridges up the top so that it pivots up and then tighten it down. And if you need to make adjustments, but there it is, there's the left side. Let me get up now and show you. There's your left side and there's your right side over there. So they're installed. This is not a difficult job. I would certainly consider uh, installation of most of it inside so that when you come out, it's easy. So let me give you a straight shot. I had my camera turned at an angle so you can see both sides. And then just get on your bike and test it. And like I say, I've got mine now so that I can pivot these and turn these up on both sides. So, all right. Hopefully you enjoy this. Now this is a 22 gold wing uh, installation. And it's, a, and it's a manual transmission, and that makes no difference. So it'll work on DCT, anyone, 2018 and up, Gold Strike. All right, hope you enjoy, and hopefully this is helpful.